Hi, this is Deboki, and today I'm going to be reviewing Eligible by Curtis Sittenfeld. So Eligible is a modern day retelling of Pride and Prejudice featuring a yoga instructor Jane, magazine writer Liz, and the rest of the Bennett family as they deal with the arrival of Doctor slash reality TV star Chip Bingley and his sister and super friendly friend uh, Darcy um, and all the havoc that they wreak on the elder Bennett sisters' love lives. Um, so when I first heard about this book, I basically heard that it was a Pride and Prejudice meets The Bachelor, and that's what got me super excited. There's kind of two things about me that this strongly appeals to. Um, there's the part of me that uh, every few months kind of sits down and marathons through a variety of different Pride and Prejudice adaptations, um, usually starting with the Kira Knightley movie, uh, then going into the BBC miniseries, then rewatching the Lizzie Bennet diaries, and then going to Bridget Jones's diaries, and then usually cycling back to the Kira Knightley movie. Um, so yeah, I love Pride and Prejudice adaptations. I don't really have a good reason why, I just, I don't know, it's fun. Um, and then the other part of me that this strongly appeals to is the part that has been marathoning uh, reality TV dating shows, well, a lot of other type of reality TV shows as well, um, since at least the VH1, like, rock -a love era. Um, I feel like I have a pretty solid grasp of the rock and like the VH1 um, dating TV shows starting with Flavor of Love, ending with around Frank the Entertainer, and then you know moving on to the MTV Shot at Love with Te Tequila, and then you know moving on from there to now I mostly watch The Real Housewives. Um, weirdly though, the Bachelor is actually one of the few reality TV shows that I don't get super excited about. Um, I really like my reality TV shows to have enough awareness that they are trash, and I kind of like the Rock of Love style show where everyone knows that they're mostly really just there for free drinks. Um, it's a um, motivation in life I think I can relate to a little bit better. Uh, so, reality TV show and Pride and Prejudice come together, I figured this book was going to be perfect for me. Uh, so I was super excited when I put it on hold, even more excited when it came in, and then I actually decided to read the summary because that's helpful to do, um, and I started getting a little bit nervous. Um, for one thing, I started realizing that the reality TV show aspect of this plot was going to be not as big as I originally thought it was going to be. I was expecting something like the TV show Unreal where like somehow Jane and Chip Bingley are on this reality TV show together and then, I don't know, we get to see some of the machinations of the reality TV show and also watch Pride and Prejudice happen alongside it. Um, which, that's my fault. I mean, I, I really shouldn't have projected those expectations onto a book. Um, it's not like Curtis Sinfeld was like sitting around and was like, oh, this is what Deboki wants to read today. Um, but that is kind of what I was hoping for uh, going into it. And very quickly reading the summary even, I was like, I don't think this is what I'm getting. The other thing that was kind of rubbed me the wrong way, um, just based on the summary, was that it seemed to engage in a lot of that kind of like shallow, superficial form of satire where you're not really satirizing things as much as you're just saying this person really likes insert super mockable thing and that's your commentary on that person. Um, this kind of specifically comes up um, with the uh, younger Bennett sisters where based on the summary um, we learn that the younger, youngest sisters, Kitty and Lydia, are too busy with their CrossFit workouts and paleo diets to get jobs. Um, something about that line was like kind of lazy, I guess. Like, I get it, I guess 1800s flighty girl is now 21st century CrossFit girl. Um, but it was just one line in the summary, so I decided to kind of ignore those qualms and go ahead and start reading the book once I got it. Um, but as I started reading the book, my mixed feelings kind of just stayed mixed. Um, they may have even gotten more mixed because um, I thought the book had a lot of really good 
ideas. And so I was really excited when I first started reading it mm. because it was really fun to see how the um, how Sinfeld was translating characters and events from the 1800s into modern day equivalents. And I think that's the fun of any kind of modern day adaptation. Um, it's just really interesting to see what, you know, characters who in one setting may be more constrained by society would do when in like a kind of a more current situation where they have a little bit more freedom. And I think in the book she does things that actually translate that um, freedom into really interesting ways. Um, the biggest example, and this is something we learn early on in the book so it shouldn't be too spoilery, is that Jane in this ineligible is actually trying to get pregnant on her own. So she's in her 40s, she's had numerous relationships that haven't gone anywhere, um, so she's just like, well, I do want a child, so I'm just gonna, you know, take care of this. And, you know, that's something that's, like, radically different from Jane Austen's world, right? Like, you, for Jane in the Bennett family in Pride and Prejudice, the book, to want to get pregnant on her own would have been, you know, completely scandalous. Whereas Jane in Eligible, you know, it's like a lot of people probably have their judgments about it, but it's not going to be that same level of scandal. Um, there also probably wasn't a wide availability of sperm banks, I assume, in Pride and Prejudice world, but, you know, details. And the book had uh, had more things that were interesting in that same way. Uh, and I don't want to get into too many more examples because some of them start to get actually a little bit spoilery. But I will say that the way that she kind of deals with Wickham um, has a lot of potential. Um, but I think what kind of ultimately failed for me is that there was a lot of setup for these characters. And there's like kind of, you know, an initial execution for how their story follows through. But ultimately, I felt like the book dealt with these characters and these changes from the original source material in ways that are actually kind of shallow. Like, it was like, okay, Jane in current day is, you know, this woman who's trying to get pregnant on her own. But then ultimately, the only reason that's important is, is for how it corresponds to the breakup of her relationship in the original book. Um, it didn't really feel, to me at least, like the book engaged with it in any other significant way. Um, there are, again, I don't want to get too much into this um, details in case people um, don't want to be spoiled, but there is a character who is trans in the book, and the, um, the way that the book kind of unfolds that and then subsequently deals with it um for me again was just very um surface level it was just like you learn that the character is trans there's an effect on the story and the character's relationships with each other um but that really was kind of it it was really only done to the extent that it made the plot of the book uh, parallel the Pride and Prejudice plot. Um, the story really knew what to do with the character beyond that. This comes up again with another character who you learn is anorexic and it kind of just comes up and it serves as a mechanism for some characters to talk to each other and to talk to each other again and that's the extent to which it's deal dealt with. And for some plot lines I think like it for like really silly things like you know these flighty sisters are now CrossFit obsessed. Like, that's fine. You don't need a deeper analysis of that. Like, I think it's kind of like, like I said, I think it's kind of a very superficial way to approach that um, sort of equivalency, but it's not something that you need to like go in depth on. But something like, you know, a 40 year old single woman um, becoming pregnant on her own, a trans character, um, anorexia, when you kind of just treat those as surface level. Um, stories that, or when you treat those as kind of just stories that propel um, a plot that you're written by somebody else, and it doesn't really give your story any sense of its own identity, uh, it just, it 
for me at least it fell a little short. So as I was reading this book, I was actually comparing it a lot in my mind to Bridget Jones's diaries and Lizzie Bennet diaries, um, which are both modern day adaptations of Pride and Prejudice. And what I really kind of was thinking about is how those books have um, either, like Bridget Jones's diaries takes so many liberties with Pride and Prejudice that it kind of becomes its own world, um, or the Lizzie Bennet diaries where, you know, it sticks a lot more closely to the original plot, um, but I think it really uh, does a lot of work to examine the relationship of uh, Lizzie with her sisters and with her friend Charlotte um, to actually kind of build out the characters um, in ways that actually have kind of changed my reading of the original Pride and Prejudice stories. Um, I think one of my other issues with Eligible is that it felt like it never really was a book that could stand on its own. So things like Bridget Jones's Diary, like you can watch that movie without knowing Pride and Prejudice and you're equally as invested in the relationship um, between Bridget Jones and Darcy and you're equally invested in the characters as you would be if you did know. Um, Lizzie Bennet Diaries is, you know, again, it sticks more closely to the plot of the books, and so, you know, you are bringing your knowledge of Darcy and Lizzie into it, um, but characters in the series, I think, are so much well, um, are, are just so well drawn out and in ways that aren't part of the original text that you also get a lot out of watching the series, both just for the series itself and for how it might relate, how it might kind of affect your understanding of the original story. With Eligible, I never actually had the feeling that I would have read, I would have enjoyed this book if I didn't have Pride and Prejudice as kind of my background soundtrack, I guess, to this. Um, the Liz Bennett and Darcy in this book, like, I wasn't actually rooting for them except for the fact that I knew that they are the equivalents of Elizabeth Bennett and Darcy, and I root for those characters. So I kind of felt like I needed to do the work of making myself invested in the story. And I think that's a shame because there are so many interesting things in terms of both how it translated the story into the modern day and like having the basis of character and having characters who could build out kind of a very different world from the original Pride and Prejudice. Um, so it's both like similar um, in ways that are very familiar, but also different in ways that could be very interesting, except it never, to me at least, felt like it engaged in the ways that those differences are interesting. And again, when you have a trans character, like, and you have um, a woman who's trying to get pregnant on her own, like, those are really interesting, those are really compelling, like, kind of stories to pursue, and they are important to the plot, but they're only really important to the extent that they bring Liz and Darcy together. Um, at least that's what it felt like for me. In Pride and Prejudice, you know, that's fine. Like, pretty much everything happens in that book to bring Liz and Darcy, or to bring Elizabeth and Darcy together. Um, you know, Lydia, like, eloping with Wickham is really just a way to get Darcy to prove that he's a great person to Elizabeth. When you're adapting it into another setting, I think you have to kind of justify why you're making this adaptation because it's like, why why should I read this book if I have the original, like, book to read? And when I got to the end of this book, I kind of felt like, well, I could have just read the original one for all that these changes did for me, um, or for all that I kind of got out of reading it. Whereas, you know, I finished Lizzie Bennet Diaries, um, or f finished watching Bridget Jones's Diaries, and I never really have the feeling of, like, well, I could have just watched the Kira Knightley movie, or I could have just been reading the book. Um, there's so much more that's built out in those stories and in those worlds that you really feel, at least for me, that, you know, there's a story that I'm invested in, that this is a series that is both separate and a part of the world of Pride and Prejudice. And that kept me keeps me more interested than just saying, well, this is like a mapping of Pride and Prejudice from the 1800s into Pride and Prejudice in the 21st century. So as far as um, my kind of overall feelings about the book, I have been kind of ragging on it a lot. Um, it's not a book that I would read again. Um, it's not a book that I would kind of just like 
tell a friend just randomly to go read it. I would say if you are a fan of Pride and Prejudice, if you do like adaptations, you should give it a try. Um, I have other, I know other people who have read it and who have really enjoyed it. Um, so it's possible that I was kind of bringing what I like and my personal preferences about adaptations to the story. Um, I am curious though if you have read it um, and you agree or disagree definitely let me know and also if you have recommendations for other adaptations of Pride and Prejudice I would love to hear them. Um, I still have not watched Bride and Prejudice um, which I really want to do um, partially because I really now have this like whole thing about wanting to compare these different adaptations um, and it would be really cool to have one that's not like entirely centered around um, Western characters, so I really want to do that at some point. This is my first time ever making a video um, for YouTube, for BookTube. I'm like really new to BookTube, so um, this is like the 10th, 20th iteration of this re review that I have made. Um, I do also have a blog, which I'll link to below, um, where so far I kind of mostly just review Korean dramas that I've been watching. Um, that's the other major thing that I love to marathon, um, along with reality TV and uh, Pride and Prejudice. Um, and also kind of complaining, I also use it to talk about grad school and um, just kind of how my life and science is going. Um, and I do also have a Twitter account, which I'll link to below. And yeah.